Welcome friends, welcome once again to New Life in Jesus brought to you by the Emmanuel Christian Broadcasting Network. It is a great joy and a privilege to share with you the Word of God today and to bring you this Word at this time in an effort to strengthen you and to encourage you in the Lord. Remember, Jesus loves you. Remember that He is in control of your life when you surrender your life or your problem to Him. But many times in our own walk with God, many times in our life, we find that we could be in turbulent waters. We could be having or undergoing trials that, that we have never faced before. We could be having questions for which we don't have answers. We could be having situations where we do not know which direction to go or how to deal with. But the Bible says that we are a people who are called to walk in the promises of God and to walk by faith and not by fear. Today I would like us to look upon this word. What does it mean when God says walking by faith? and not in fear. Why is it such an important aspect of our own lives, in our walk with God, in our love for Him? Why is it that we ought to walk with faith? And what does it do? How is the breakthrough in our lives going to come about? Second Corinthians, turn with me to Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. To verse 18. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. For we walk by faith and not by sight. A man of God, Smith Wigglesworth, once put it like this. I am not afraid or I am not moved by what I see. I am moved by what I believe. Many times in our lives we get frightened or we get disturbed or troubled by what we see. But the Bible says we ought to walk by what we believe. And that is what it's talking about here when it says you have to walk by faith and not by fear. In other words, faith is not what you see, when Jesus cursed the fig tree, nothing happened straight away. But 24 hours later, the disciples came back and found that the same tree was withered. It had withered up from the roots. When Jesus prayed in the invisible, it looked like nothing was happening, but something was happening there. That's how faith works. Sometimes it can happen straight away. Sometimes it can take a little while for your miracle to come about. Sometimes you may have instant healing. Sometimes the healing may take a few days. But either way, it always works. Faith is not a static entity. It's not meant to stay at the same level in one place. Faith is trusting God. My brother, my sister, faith is trusting God. Faith is willingness to walk even when you don't have the answers. It's quite easy to walk when we have the answers, isn't it? But faith is willingness to walk even though we don't have the answers. Abraham walked by faith not knowing where he was going. Many of us are familiar with that. 
We want to know every question answered before we move. But the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. You may have many religious rules or principles. But if we don't have faith we are not pleasing God. Because God loves to see his word trusted. You and I are called to trust his word. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, the Bible says. Try me and know me. Search me and see me. Knock and it shall be opened to you. Seek and you shall find. You find that the word of God uses language in this manner. Encouraging us to believe, encouraging us to put our trust in God, encouraging us to put our faith in Him. Faith. Walk by faith and not by sight. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Don't go by what you see, go by what you hear. Because that will determine whether or not we can overcome. In 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 24, when David was fighting the Philistines, there was something that the Lord did right in that place. It was quite unique among the, among the many victories that David had before. It says in 2 Samuel 5, 24, and it shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, then you shall advance quickly. For then the Lord will go out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. And verse 25 says, And David did so, so the Lord commanded him. And he drove back the Philistines from Geba as far as Giza. My beloved friends in God. We find here that when David was fighting the Philistines, he was in a situation where he was fighting. It was a, a life or death matter. He was fighting for his life. He was in the midst of battle. God said to him, when you hear the sound of marching in the top of the mulberry tree, then you go into battle and I will give you the victory. Note the word there, I will give you the victory. So no matter how big the problem was, no matter how big the size of his enemies were, he said, don't go. Go by what you see, but go by what you hear. When you hear the sound of the rustling of the trees, of the mulberry tree, then you go. That is the sign that God gave him when he was going to go into battle. Go by what you hear. So that leaves us with a Essential question, doesn't it? Go by what you hear. What do you hear? What do you and I hear? The prophet Elijah, many times in this, in this, in this world, we, we hear many things. We hear the voices of fear. We hear the voices of doubt. We hear the voices of doom and gloom. But are you willing to hear the word of God? Are you willing to take God at his word? Are you willing to hold on to the miracle working power of God? Are you my brother, my sister who are watching? The prophet Elijah was in famine, the Bible says in 1 Kings 18 41. Yet he turns around and says, I hear the sound of a heavy rain. He spoke words of faith, he spoke words, he, he, he uttered words of life putting his trust in God before he could see the miracle working power in his life. So you and I are left with this question. Which report are we going to choose to believe? Are we going to choose to believe or hear the things that we are hearing in this world, the voices of fear, the voices of doubt, or are we willing to hear the word of God. My beloved friends in God, the word of God is a living word. It's a life-giving word. It's a hope-giving word. It's a tremendous word. It's the word the Bible says that was in the beginning, was and is forevermore, shall be.
the word of God. That is what faith does. Faith doesn't look at facts and say, I give up. You will never hear a word from heaven that says, I give up. So you and I have to choose to determine what we believe. We have to determine what we choose to believe. Elijah said famine, saw famine, but he chose to believe the sound of the abundance of rain. That is faith. What a contradiction. Faith is a contradiction, my brother, my sister. Faith is a contradiction to what this world is telling you. Faith is a contradiction. When you are in sickness, faith will say you will be healed. When you are in doubt, faith will say you are going to be restored. It's always a contradiction to this world. That is why Jesus many times said, do not be afraid, only believe. And this is the fundamental difference that can prevent us from getting a breakthrough in our life. Choosing to believe God. Choosing to receiving from God. So the question I want to ask you today is are you responding to what you are seeing or are you responding to what heaven is saying to you? Heaven is saying to you that you shall be well. Heaven is saying to you that when you believe in me, if my people listen to me and turn themselves from their wicked ways, I, my, the God from heaven, will hear. And I will heal their land. My beloved friends in God, you have to decide. Are you going to live by what you see? Or are you going to live by what you hear? Man shall not live by bread alone, the Bible says. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That is the contradiction that Jesus gave when, when Satan tempted him after he had fasted for 40 days. The contradiction of faith. When Satan told him, turn these stones into bread, Jesus turned around and said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. What a blessed, privileged position you and I have in Christ. That we, who are called to be his children, have his word in our lives. We have the life-giving word. We have the hope-giving word. We have the tremendous power in the word of God that is for us. Of whom shall we be afraid? This is why the psalmist says, in spite of all the wealth that he had seen, in spite of all the power he said, he, he had known, he turned around and said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. My beloved friends in Christ, you have to decide. Are you going to live by what you see or by what you hear? Faith comes by hearing what we hear. That's who you can be in a down world. You can get your news from another arena and that's the good news. The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ who is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. If you are seeing a defeat in your life right now, remember what you are hearing is greater than what you are seeing. This is the shout of faith. This is the shout of faith. Faith that overcomes the whole world. In fact, Jesus gave the church three reasons to be cheerful. It's called the three cheers to the church. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Jesus said in John 16, 33, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. There he promises you victory. He promises you and me victory. If he says, if I overcame, you will overcome. Now you and I are not called to overcome things by our own strength, by our own power, by our own energy or by our own plans. We are called to overcome through Jesus Christ, through him who is our Lord and Savior. Through him who is the unblemished lamb of God. Through him who is known to be the first, the last, the beginning and the end. 
the great one, the only sufficient king, our servant king. Jesus gave himself to us, my beloved friends. Don't give yourself into doubt. Don't give yourself into fear. He, the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of hope, of love, and a sound mind, of power. And you see the word there, of a sound mind. Because the battle is in the mind. The battle to choose what you believe is in the mind. Do you choose to believe the report of the world or you choose to believe the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Jesus gave us the reason. We are hearing that the trumpet is going to sound. We are hearing that he is bringing another kingdom where righteousness will be exalted when Jesus comes soon. Don't live by what you see. Live by what you hear. We live in an age where social media and the digital media is fast increasing. Where people want instant gratification. Instantly you want to deliver something. But you and I are called to choose by what to choose to live by what we hear. We choose to live by what we hear. Jesus said, cheer up three times. Be of good cheer, as I mentioned in John 16, 33. Matthew 9, 2, he said, be of good cheer, my son, your sins are forgiven you. When he told the paralytic man, he said, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. You know, the people in the day were amazed. Who can forgive sin like this? How can he forgive sin? It's because of his blood, my brother, my sister. The blood of Jesus. You know, the people in that day when Jesus was cruci being crucified, they made a statement which they didn't quite understand the magnitude of. When you read the events that led up around the time of the crucifixion or the condemnation of Jesus and the crowd was shouting out, give us Barabbas, they said something. They said something that blesses them to this day. They said, your blood, the blood of Jesus be upon us and upon our children. They made a declaration. They did not know. They were, they were thinking they were going to put a, a condemn a man and he's going to die as a result and that they would take the blame. But little did they know that the blood of Jesus will never blame anybody. Little did they know that the blood of Jesus always saves, always gives life. Little did they know that the blood of Jesus will never condemn anybody. Yes, if it was the blood of any other man, it would have. But the blood of Jesus is life-giving. You and I are called to be the children of God. You and I are called, when we say, to plead his blood upon our lives, upon our situations, upon our homes, upon our finances, upon our children. Whatever situation you face, plead the blood of Jesus. The second cheer was this. When he said in Matthew 9, verse 2, Behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise and walk? But that you may know that the sons of man, Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed and go to your house. He arose and departed to his house. The multitude saw it, marveled. And they, were, they marveled and glorified God who has given such power to men. My brother, my sister, the first cheer was the cheer of victory that Jesus gave. The second cheer was the cheer where he said, your sin is forgiven of you. Don't just celebrate what you have got. Celebrate what you got rid of. 
He was telling the paralytic man, you've got rid of sickness, you've got rid of, uh, rid of the paralysis in your life, celebrate it, rise up, get up and walk. Your shame, your guilt, your fear, everything has gone away. You are a new creation. You, the old things have passed away. Behold, I make all things new. Your sins are forgiven. Jesus finished it at Calvary, my brother, my sister. But you and I don't sometimes in our, in the cares of this world, we, in the distractions of life, sometimes we are not able to do that, are we? We're not able to bring our problems to our Lord because we choose to carry it on our own. Matthew 14, 27 says, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. It is I, do not be afraid. It may look like the world around you is winning, but Jesus says, are you afraid? I have overcome the world. Do you feel burdened? Then Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven you. It is I, do not be afraid. Jesus said in John 15, 18, you are in the world and you are not of the world. In the world you may be seeing many things happening. Things may be difficult to comprehend in your own lives. Yet Jesus says you are not of the world you have to hear from his word. Let us be hearers and doers of the word of God, my brother, my sister. Faith people, are you a faith person is my question. Faith people look at defeat and see victory. Faith people look at discouragement and see encouragement. Faith people see Deuteronomy 28.3. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the country. Everything changes when you get the word of God. Watching one thing, hearing one another thing. You and I are called to be doers of the word of God. If you are sick today, Isaiah 53 says, I am healed. I hear I am free according to the book of John, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. My brother, my sister, Romans 8 says, In all of things I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who loved and gave himself for me. So this day, no matter what is going on in your life, whatever you're hearing, whatever you're seeing, remember, you and I have to be moved by what we believe. That is the conviction of faith. That is the contradiction of faith against this world. Calvary looked like a defeat for the people who saw it in the beginning. But the third day Jesus rose in victory, the Bible says. Yes, it is the last days, but the same God in the last days said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your faith has to be woken up every day, my brother, my sister. That only happens when we read the word of God. We don't live by what we see, we live by what we hear. God is on the throne, sin and death are defeated. Jesus is alive, he is Lord, he is still healer, he is still deliverer. Faith overcomes the world. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall hurt you. Serpents attacks with its head. Scorpions attack with its tail. Heads, whether a thing attacks you with its head or with its tail, you and I are called to be the winners. Nothing by no means shall hurt you. Our God has crushed the head of the serpent. All you will hear is the sound of victory in Jesus' name when you wake up your faith. Are you willing to wake up your faith today? Even now as we pray, I pray that the Lord will encourage you and challenge you to be a doer of his word and to, be, to, to walk in his word, believing his word, so that we are moved by what 
we believe. Let us pray. Lord, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this time that you have given us. We thank you that you are God. We thank you that you are seated on the throne. We thank you that your word says no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. We thank you for your word, O God. We thank you that you are calling us to believe your word in spite of our trials, in spite of our failures, in spite of our challenges in our life, O oh God. We thank you that you are God and you are seated on the throne. If any among us are sick, help us to declare healing over our lives according to your word, that as we believe you, we will be healed. If any of us are in doubt, in fear, in pain, we help us to surrender it to you now. And for those of us who do not know you as Lord and Savior, help us to know, know you and give you our lives today that we may rejoice in you and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I ask and pray. Amen. Dear friends, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. If you need prayer, call us on the number on your screen. You can even email us. Till we meet again next time on New Life in Jesus, God bless you and keep you.